by Austin Kunis for University of Denver, University College. Welcome to the Alberta Ballet Board meeting. Today we're going to be talking about the implementation of the Alberta Ballet 2, as well as the risks and opportunities that the Alberta Ballet faces when implementing this program. To get a better understanding of the Alberta Ballet 2, we're also going to look at complementary companies for two other pre-existing ballet companies, the Atlanta Ballet 2 and the Joffrey Ballet 2. So we're going to first get looking at what are the opportunities and risks associated with the Alberta Ballet 2. First are the opportunities, and all of these opportunities are reflective of growth. So first we're going to see internal growth with growth within the Alberta Ballet. This program will give us new venues, new students, and increased relationships between our students and professionals. So once again, it'll be growth internally. We'll also see external growth and growth within our community. This program is developed because it's something that patrons want. We did it for them. Additionally, we'll be able to reach smaller venues and expose new patrons to the ballet. We'll also see a growth in our reputation. This is new program, it's new content. The Atlanta Ballet describes their program as these young individuals are dancers who have arrived at a defining point in their transition to becoming professional dancers. Also, the potential for this to become the next big thing. So we'll be able to promote this as being the next step for what's coming forward in dance. And we'll also see a growth in our assets. We'll see new assets as well as new production and potential revenue streams. So we'll have our brand new building as well as the potential for even further growth. Now, of course, there's risks involved as well. The cost of the campaign is a minimum of $90 million, and the total expenses have increased over the past three years. We could expect our expenses to increase as well as this program keeps growing, so we need to make sure that we have the financial stability to take on this program. Additionally, with the individuals involved, we don't know who's going to be coming to this program, but we have the dancers that we want. In the case of the Atlanta Ballet, they were able to get dancers that they wanted, but some of them had never performed in a full-length ballet. Additionally, we need to look at our program resources and risks involved. What will we need to make this program strong? In the case of the Joffrey 2, their program fed into the senior company very, very quickly. In this case, almost half the current complement is new since this past spring. So we need to make sure we have the resources to continue feeding the cycle of our complementary company into our main company. Now, could the creation of the Alberta Ballet 2 compromise the main company's reputation? There's three main risks toward their reputation, and that involves high expectations, balance between companies, and the fact that this is a big project. With our high expectations, we're one of Canada's premier dance companies. Alberta Ballet is committed to an artistic vision of powerfully exciting dance, and this program, Alberta Ballet 2, is a complementary group. So we already have high expectations for what this program is going to be. And if it's not meeting what people think it is, it has a chance to damage our reputation. We also need to look at the balance between our two companies. We're probably going to be tapping into a lot of our resources of our main company. In the case of the Atlanta Ballet 2, the program was taught by the main company's faculty. And for each student in the complimentary company, they had an Atlanta Ballet company as a mentor. So we need to make sure that we're spreading our resources evenly. We don't want to invest entirely in our complementary company because then our main company will be dry in their resources. And then also the fact that this is just such a big project. You know, it's a $90, $90 million campaign. We do have somewhat of a reinsurance that we will get government funding, but none of that is 100% positive, and it's all or nothing, basically. The majority of this program is going to develop a new space for us, and the leases on our box office and school spaces are set to expire. So if for some reason this program falls through, our finances drop, construction halts, we'll be an organization without a facility. And that has a chance to damage what we can produce. Now, it's very important to remember that a major source of dissatisfaction on the part of many service customers is not inferior service, but exaggerated expectations. We need to make sure that we're promoting the Alberta Ballet 2 as a complementary program to the Alberta Ballet. They're not the same thing. We need to make sure people aren't going to these shows expecting to see a professional company. But at the same time, we need to find a way to market it to show that these are complementary. They both are part of the Alberta Ballet umbrella. But we need to make sure that we don't have exaggerated expectations for what this program is. 
Now, what should we do if there is a decrease in interest for the Alberta LA2? Well, there's three main factors. We cannot disregard our performers. We should not dissolve the Alberta LA2, and we do embrace our new facility. The firm, first and foremost, our performers. We need to remember that they came to us. They came for a one to two year program that'll give them an opportunity to advance their skill set, repertoire, and exposure to potential employment for other companies. So they came to us looking to grow. We can't just push them to the side because the program isn't operating the way we expected it to be. Additionally, we have to continue utilizing our performers because if we want to give the best performances that we can, we need to remember the importance of the physicality of ballet. An inconsistent schedule makes it difficult for the Alberta Ballet students to stay in top physical condition. So you need to make sure we're continually utilizing them so we can have the best end product. Additionally, we should not dissolve the ballet. Not for us per se, but for the community we serve. You know, it's let us go into smaller communities. The program has acted as both an outreach and educational programming. So we don't want to take this away from what we already gave the public. Additionally, we could change it up, you know? The most effective means for stimulating primary demand is through organizations with a broader scope. So we can increase our programming. Our division and our training has multi-level lessons in jazz and modern dance. So we have the opportunity to increase our ballet programming into including different genres of dance. Additionally, we need to embrace our new facility. We have our gorgeous new facility. We have our 200 seat performance theater. In the case of uh, interest in Alberta Ballet 2 declines, if we don't have tours going on, that could be where performances are held, you know? And most importantly, because we talked in the previous two things about the importance of continuation of this program and not dissolving, how, how are we going to keep that going? Well, we have rental income. In comparing our new facility to the Lunchbox Theater, which is also in downtown Calgary, that theater only seats 124 but their daily rental rates are $1,000 for corporate rates and 400 for artistic organizations. So all of a sudden we have this new revenue stream through our new facility that could allow us to fund our program and continue the Alberta Ballet. Even if uh, interest declines, we still have a back of financial funding. So using those three factors, we have Alberta Ballet's two formula for developing patron interest. So embracing our performers and embracing the Alberta Ballet 2 leads to a great artistic product. Utilizing our new 200 seat performance space leads to our best seats and best prices. And keeping up with our already strong reputation leads to outstanding customer service. So our great artistic product, our best seats, best prices, and our outstanding customer service all combined leads to all these factors that can make our organization grow. But how else can we grow if we want to expand our organization? We have three main growth areas. Digital content, performed content, and joint productions. With our digital content, we can reach even more markets. We can grow nationally and internationally. We allow for the consistent sharing of work. And as Elena Belay describes, it's working to fulfill the mission to share the power and joy of dance with you. We're sharing past performances, creating virtual classes for our patrons and students to enjoy at home. Which is expanding the repertoire to be at home, expanding what we offer. And additionally, performed content, you know, expanding. We have the opportunities to do smaller performances in our space, as well as doing the jazz and modern dances, tapping into the resources we already have. And finally, joint productions. We have the Edmonton Opera, we have the Calgary Opera. In 2018, you know, we performed with the Calgary Opera as well. And right now, we're ready to aggressively pursue opportunities presented by a change in market. And what are those opportunities? this, the rarely performed. We need to increase our partnership with these organizations so they're no longer rarely performed and that we can increase our joint productions with our companies. So where do you go through here? So you know, looking forward, this is a big project. It has a potential lead to growth, but of course there's going to be challenges. So we have to closely monitor our patron responses as well as our internal response. How are we responding to this program? So looking at all the factors, if we take methodical and strategic steps to expand our organization while also maintaining patron awareness, we're going to be on track for success. You know, and where did that start? Adaption must come from within the organization. And so we have this new idea of the Alberta Ballet 2. And now that we have it, we need to stand by it. Because even by asserting an idea, even an ideal to stand for, it'll set our standards high. So by embracing all the factors that we've discussed, looking at the strengths, the Alberta Ballet 2 has the potential to become something great.